it's that time of year again. It's the end of March and it's my second year as a consistent YouTuber. I did this a year ago where I asked everybody if they had questions after the one year anniversary. Here we are in year two, a lot more friends, a lot more subscribers. I thank you all and I thank everybody that submitted questions for this q and I'm gonna try to get to as many as possible. So let's play 20 questions. When taking a solo, how do you control the other musicians' dynamics? Or let them know you want them to play quietly or louder? Uh, that's the thing, you can't control the other musicians' dynamics, unfortunately. If you're playing with good musicians that are listening, then they'll know to come down when they need to come down. One way to make musicians play softer is for you to play softer, but that only works if the other musicians are tuned in to what you're doing. So say you're taking a solo, you want them to come down, rest, use space, and play soft. Force everybody to listen, hopefully that works. What's the hardest hurdle that you've had to overcome in your musical journey? How did you make it through? This one is easy. Self-doubt is the hardest hurdle, hands down. Uh, I've had physical ailments, I've played incredibly hard music, I've had to travel and be on the road, I've worked with people with bad personalities, and the hardest, hands down, is self-doubt. Believing in myself, uh, knowing that I can do it, playing my best, and enjoying it. That's something I'm still working on to this day. What method or approach do you think is the best for learning all the notes on the fretboard? Do you think this is a skill every bassist should master? Definitely. You should know your instrument. It helps in any kind of music that you play. The first place I start is with the dots. I teach my students that those dots are like white keys on a piano. Most of the notes, save for uh, two or three of them, are natural notes. G, C, D, E, A. Think about the dots, negotiate the dots, play around the dots, those are your Y keys. That's a good place to start. How long did it take you to get to a point where you could solo comfortably and musically? Can I say that I'm still working on that? Uh, comfortably and musically, I think I had something happen when I was 19 years old and I was playing in a group and all of a sudden I kinda let go and I stopped trying to think about what I was gonna play and stuff just started coming out of me. So it was probably around then, um, late teen years, and I'm still working on it. What are your thoughts on the electric upright? And how do you compare it to double bass and fretless? I love the electric upright. Uh, I played with Maynard Ferguson for almost two years, and the traveling instrument with the band was an electric upright, a wonderful NS uh, electric upright that I played all over the world. I loved playing it. I don't treat it like it's an acoustic bass. Uh, I would play it as though uh, I was doing my job on it, um, but there's something that's kind of missing about the resonance of the instrument and the percussiveness of the instrument that's really not there um, like it is on a double bass. I love the instrument. It's got a big fretless kind of sound to it, but in my opinion, it is no substitute for a real acoustic double bass. Any tips on internalizing tunes? Listen to them over and over again. If there's a tune you're trying to learn, the best thing you can do is get as many versions of that tune as possible and or listen to one version over and over and over and over again. Sing it as much as possible. Sing the melody, the head, the solos. Listen, 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 listen. Bass biz wise. Base wages versus the economy. Have your area's wages stayed the same, gone up or gone down? That's a great question, and I'm gonna say that they've gone up just a little bit. They've probably gone up about $20 in the last 20 years. That's not a lot. When I started gigging in the early 90s, gigs were paying 60, 70 bucks. Um, fast forward to around 2000, they were maybe paying 100 bucks, 90 to 100 bucks. The average gig will net you, in this town, maybe 120 bucks, 125 bucks, 150 if you're lucky. That's not really great. Although I don't do a lot of jobbing, like weddings and things like that. I do a lot of jazz clubs, performance opportunities, um, but still, it hasn't grown tremendously. In order to make a living in Pittsburgh, not only do I have to play four or five nights a week, but I have to teach at a public school and two colleges. 
in order to keep gas in my car right now. So the good news is that the gigs are starting to come back. So hang in there. Performance opportunities are really opening up again. My book is filling up and I hope yours is too. Is there someone you've based your style off of teaching-wise? Did you have experience as an educator before making YouTube videos? Yes. My mother's been a teacher as long as I've been alive, and she's absolutely one of my biggest influences. Also, I had some really wonderful mentors growing up and some people who guided me, and so I'm definitely inspired. And I did have experience. I've been teaching at a public school as an adjunct for 20 years. I'm at Pittsburgh's Performing Arts School, and I teach at two colleges, West Virginia University and Duquesne University. In fact, most of my ideas for my videos come from lessons with my students. Do you feel that you use the same skills and think about navigating the instrument in the same way when swapping between double bass and bass guitar? I think musically on both instruments, I think there are universal concepts that apply when playing both. Uh, dynamics, intonation, note length, groove, uh, playing a bass line, things that are easily transferable. The techniques to get there are different for both. I think you have to draw a line technically and tell your body when you're playing this as opposed to playing this. What do you do when you feel stuck on learning? Well, let me say that plateaus are a normal part of growth. We are all gonna reach places where we feel like we're not getting better. It's just a plateau. It gets better after that. For me, it requires changing up. Maybe I need to practice a little more classical music. Maybe I need to play another instrument like the piano or my trumpet. Uh, it could be something as simple as really journaling after my gigs a lot and studying what I'm writing. Whatever works for you. I like to use a lot of parallels with working out. We are athletes of the fine motor muscles. And when you work out and you hit a plateau, change the exercise, do something different, put on a heavier weight, lift for higher reps. Music is the same way. You gotta play some tricks on your brain, play free, play a style you don't usually play, play in a key you don't usually play. Shake it up. This one's from Instagram. Bass is such a divide between rhythm and melody. How do you balance them? That one's easy. Rhythm, 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 melody. Rhythm comes first. The bass is in the rhythm section. I've been telling my students lately, it's a drum. Think rhythmically first. Anything you play melodically will probably make sense. Think melodically, but without rhythm, it's not gonna feel good. Let your rhythmic side overpower you and start from there. What do you want from a drummer or any other rhythm section player? I want them to listen above all. I'm really blessed to play with some really great musicians here in my city, and they're all different. Some of them are really busy, and some of them leave a lot of space. The thing that they all have in common is they listen. We listen to one another, and we complement each other. I wanna play with other musicians that are listening to us more than they're listening to themselves. Remember that. This is from one of my students. What's your warm up and warm down routine look like? Does it change depending on what you're working on? I like to do the same thing. Uh, again, I'm gonna bring up the whole athleticism thing. When you go to the gym, you have a plan, you warm up and you execute that plan. So I like to do the same thing. The jazz musicians here in Pittsburgh, they all know my warm up because it's the one thing I play when I take my bass out. This is an exercise by Ron Carter in his Building Walking Bass Lines book, which I highly recommend that you purchase. And it's just one of the exercises I do. I like to play all my scales if possible in two octaves. Recently, I've been having a lot of fun with John Patitucci's Bottasini exercise from his Triad Pairs book. The 
point is I have a routine, I stick to it. And based on my warm up, I know where I'm gonna be at for the rest of the session or for the gig. How essential is having an upright bass when starting out doing jazz gigs? I'd say very, very, very essential. Most of the great recordings are on upright bass. The upright bass is much more percussive and resonant than the electric bass is. I'm not saying you can't play jazz on it, but that's the preferred instrument, and it's easy to fall in love with it when you get your own and you start playing it. So if you don't have an upright bass and you really wanna start playing jazz, get one as soon as possible so that you know what that feeling is like and you can start to make that sound. How did you personally develop your relative pitch? That happened over time. Uh, I definitely played a little bit of piano and I try to sing everything I play, whether it's classical or R&B or jazz or rock. I sing all of it all the time. I'm singing solos, I'm singing bass lines. I think that's the key. You gotta sing stuff and learn how to pick it out on your instrument. It's not surprising that if you decide to go to college, they're gonna make you take a class where you have to sing notes all day. It's an important part of getting better as a musician. How can I organize my lines better? If there are two bars of a chord, how can I make it spicy without making too big of a jump into the next chord? I'm gonna to try to make this as brief as possible, but what you need to do is understand where your chord tones are. You don't always have to play the root. You might wanna aim for the third or the fifth or the seventh. Knowing this, I don't have to jump around if my chords do. I can go to the next chord tone up or the next chord tone down and make a really cool, smooth line built off of chord tones. I'm probably gonna end up talking about this in a video at some point. How to get health insurance as a full-time musician. This one is really important for all of us. I was initially resistant to getting health insurance 21 years ago when I met my wife and she was very insistent about it. I got a somewhat high deductible health insurance. I think I paid 80 bucks a month. It got me medication. I think my deductible was pretty high if I ever had to go to the hospital, but I ended up being diagnosed with MS and it paid for my medication, which was expensive. Um, it's best to have something and you can move up. That'd be my advice. Um, my advice is to do your research. Um, the Musicians Union here has a broker that uh, you can ask about plans for, for someone who works as a full-time musician, getting something affordable and in your budget, but get something, something that can at least cover doctor's visits, maybe medication up to a certain point no matter how small, and you can always move up eventually to a bigger plan. Also, you could just like marry a doctor too. <laughs> I've been playing electric bass for a long time and have considered taking the plunge and buying an upright and then finding a teacher. Is there a past due date for taking up the bass violin? No way. Um, do it, definitely. If you're performing correctly on an upright bass, it should be the most easy and natural thing, and that's what a teacher's for. A teacher's gonna show you how to do it with very little effort, very easily, making a good sound, having good technique. It's not gonna be strenuous, I don't think, and I think you'll love it. I think it'll make you younger, so don't wait. You mentioned in one of your videos that you were working to be more smooth or less snappy, percussive with your right hand technique. As an expert player, how do you go about practicing to change these kind of fundamentals? It is a constant process, something I have to work on every day, and the key word is repetition. So in this case, I'm trying to make my right hand a little smoother and lighter. I might take something like a three octave E major scale, but I might do a grouping like a three note grouping on my right hand and play that up. That'll give my right hand a real workout and I can really focus on playing light and not playing too hard. So the key for anything, relearning anything, is repetition. You have to do it over and over and over again if you wanna teach yourself something. That'd be my best advice. I was wondering how you find new inspiration or new artists over the years, and how have you been keeping yourself motivated through COVID in your career? That's a great question. Um, I've always looked to my friends, my teachers, and now my students. 
uh, to hit me to what's going on, what's everybody checking out, what's everybody listening to. Uh, sometimes another musician will send me a text and ask me if I've checked out a certain album. Sometimes my kids at school will be listening to something and urge me to check something out. Sometimes I'll get onto YouTube and see something new and really love it. Right now, I'm, I'm loving Thundercat. I'm a big fan of his. There's also a young bass player named Cole Davis who's blowing my mind right now. He's excellent if you've never checked him out. Uh, and when I don't have a new artist to kind of go with, I'll go deeper into the past and maybe look for something I've never heard before. Something by one of my favorite bass players, maybe something by Miles Davis or a unreleased Charlie Parker. There's always new stuff to find. Thankfully, with the internet, and the sources of inspiration never stop flowing. This channel is probably my biggest source of motivation over COVID. I wanted to start something in 2019 and I was just so busy and I kept putting it off. And when lockdown happened in 2020, I thought it was a great opportunity for me to get my butt moving on this channel. And here we are two years later and I have a little bit of something. So we made it, that's it. I wanna thank everybody that submitted a question. I tried to get to as many as I could. I appreciate all of the people that are watching these videos, all my new friends, all my new subscribers. Uh, I got a lot of wonderful things planned for this year, so I appreciate you watching. And because I haven't said it in a long time, please love your neighbor. I'll see you next time.